previously on Survivor. Having won four consecutive challenges, the spirits on South Island are high. Their last victory saw North Island also reduced to four members when Meter was voted off at Tribal Council. I really thought I was a lot stronger than this, but I'm not. Today is the 14th day of survival for the tribes of North and South Island. Tomorrow, they merge together to become one tribe and move from their home over there behind me to build a new camp on a new island over there. Having realized that merger is upon them, they'll be delighted, not to say relieved, that they merge on equal terms, that's to say with four members from each tribe. In the meantime, they can have some fun and for once see what it's like to be behind the camera. It's a camera. Oh, quick. What's up? Scorpion. Honestly, hi, quick. What's that in its mouth? Uh, last meal. I was wondering if you'd come. At dawn tomorrow, a chance is nigh. So pack your bags and wave goodbye. That's how it's going tomorrow. Right. Right. Your memories here would best be stored. Just pick me up and press record. Oh, excellent. Cool. Excellent. Oh, really? We're going to make a home movie. Nice. Excellent. Today. Today. Come on. So that's our last night tonight then? Yeah. Oh, you're back. You've been ages. You should have seen what was in the tree box. Me time would have had kittens. Scorpion and rugby. What's that? Us. Yep. What do you mean? It's home movies and, and action. action. <laughs> okay, will you miss your time here on the island? Yes, I will certainly miss my time here on the island. What will you miss most, Bridget? What will I miss most? I will miss hopefully the rain. <laughs> yeah, it was quite nice to um, to open up the tree mill and find the camera today. It's so. the best thing that's happened, I think. Just a toy for me to play with. It's not particularly exciting having a camera for me, really. I'd have preferred something more interesting, like paint, so that we could paint each other or do something a bit more creative, because we've, there are quite a lot of cameras around already. Um, and to get another camera doesn't really turn me on that much, to be honest. Where do you want me, boys? Just over by the uh, Nancy piece, then. Okay, I'll just zoom in on the idol here, which has had pride of place on the mantelpiece for quite a long time now because North Tribe aren't even giving us a run for our money, it's getting embarrassing. We have to ship in a reserve tribe, give us some competition. Ah! <laughs> oh, can, can you see now? Right, okay. Can you see you? Oh my god. <laughs> I look like a vegan. Stand up and have a look at your body. <laughs> Lift Show it up. Stop sucking it in. We don't want to see your arse. <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> oh, that's a big... That was just a bite that you scratched. Right, now your body. Page three. Is there some of it? Oh, look at that slimline body. Whoa! Oh. Scary, isn't it? It's bloody horrible, yeah. Right, yeah, now the body. That'll do. No, no. no. Dave, some of the You ugly buggy. <laughs> hey, I could do with uh, Father Christmas if it's uh, keep it on, can I? Yeah. Hey. Have a look at Slim hey. Mine. Body, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you see? Look at that pet disappearing. No, go side on. Side, side on. Look at oh. Them. Look at them 
yeah, the camera you can use it as his playback, it's just looking looking in the mirror, you know, and it really jumps home when you can just see how emaciated you look. So it's quite a it's quite a handy uh, tool in that respect. When I saw myself on playback, it was a bit of a bit of a shock, to be honest. The fact that my hair is just completely curled up at the back and looks a right matted mess. I don't think I'll be watching it again. <laughs> I did see myself on it. Didn't necessarily like what I saw, but I was smiling, so that's not too bad. Johnny, can you just explain why you're doing it at that end of the coconut? Because we've worked out after many days of trying that the coconut is actually at the bottom end of the coconut. Johnny normally reserves this kind of action for the Celtic Rangers game. <laughs> You're talking to me? <laughs> you talking to me? I don't see anybody else. You talking to me? That's it. Well done. Well done. Taxi well driver, done. obviously. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's how it is. Are you recording this? Yes, yeah, she's getting recording. Well right, both give Dave a kiss. <laughs> well done. Right, okay, it. right, Dave, I would like you to tell me a wee bit about the defences that we've got here. Right, the defences. Show me the defences first of right. all. If you come this way, rolling. Rowing. We used to have a beach about 15 feet out there when we yeah. first arrived. Yeah. Slowly the tide's eating away. We used to, when we first arrived, live here. Tell me about that log, Dave. This log here, can't go up to there. Couldn't see that one. Couldn't see that one. So we'll have to dig a channel along here to stop the waves coming that way. And has it been successful? Very successful. Look at that. The blue lagoon. Scottish male in his prime. Just a chunk of silver side Scottish male. There's one for the boys there in the background. Susanna in her little blue number. And there's Bridget, one for the farmers there in the back. Way. It's like a soft porn movie, you just need some crap 70s guitar music in the background. Anybody order a pizza? <laughs> Oh, that's enough of you. <laughs> Bridget? Uh, uh, Granny's just going to sit here. No, come on. All the farmers are stopping exactly what they're doing at this precise moment <laughs> oh, in time. Love the camera. Give me more. Give me sex, Bridget. Give me sex. Be the camera, that's it. <laughs> if you now look at uh, this beached area, this lovely, beautiful paradise beached area, this is where we spend uh, some of our time sunbathing when the sun is out. And this is where we go for a shit. And this is where we go for I haven't seen that yet, so that's... If you pan to the left, will you see little cairns built with stones? That's where we go to the toilet. That's where we go to the toilet. If you look across in the distance, you'll see South Island. And just Ooh. where... Boo! If you look slightly down, you can see the, the South Island's uh, banner. And what's the wildest place you've ever had sex? The wildest place I've ever had sex is in the jacuzzi. In my bum. <laughs> <laughs> and if you win the million, run me through what the night will be. Um, Pick me up from the stage, yeah. obviously. We'll do our first. In your Aston Martin. Three grams of coke on this <laughs> dashboard of my new Aston Martin. I feel I should point out, as your lawyer at this stage, <laughs> I would advise you to say nothing more on the subject. <laughs> the two prostitutes can each have a line each as well. <laughs> Million pounds, think I'd uh, give the lot to charity, wouldn't touch it. Dirty money. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to the RSPCA. The whole sum. The quiz to your dog. I don't think so. Alistair would just buy more growth hormone if he wins. <laughs> More anabolic steroids. Yeah. Um, Drew doesn't smile enough to win. No. And I'm no afraid Drew doesn't deserve it because she doesn't smile or laugh. <laughs> what about her breasts? They're huge! 
Massive jugs. That's just a scrawny body. It's not fair. And <laughs> Helen just wants to buy a house next door to her mum. I mean, how sad do you get for a 22 year old? Go and buy some drugs with it or something normal for a 22 year old. <laughs> not buy the bloody house next door. Buy some ecstasy and steal a car for God's sake. What sort of childhood do you have? Go and commit some crime. Dave will definitely win the whole Dave. Survivor 2. Dave to win a million? Yes, if North Island win. How many Newcastle United season tickets would he buy with it? <laughs> he says a very nice man, I think he'll give us 10 grand each. Yes, yeah. oh dear. Dave, we reckon you're going to win, mate. <laughs> We've always been with you. Here's Alistair opening our last survival tin. Ah! So I'm signing off, hoping Dave, next fine. time our bellies are full, our skins are dry, no. and we've got smiles on our faces. Tin. Oh! Oh! It's pineapple! Dun, dun, dun! And that's Survivor. Coming up, all is not well in the new tribe. Those fucking girls. <laughs> There's loads of chiefs and not that many Indians. The survivor's final morning as separate tribes begins as normal, but there are concerns about what might lie ahead. Oh. It doesn't feel strange about packing up because we do that every single day almost, but uh, it feels very strange in that we're not, not going to be coming back. And probably none of us will ever come back here in our lives again. A bit anxious on how we're going to greet each other when the tribes meet. I think there possibly be a bit of friction, or hopefully not. Hope we get on well. Hope the friendliness still goes, but I'm a bit dubious. We'll just have to wait and see. And on South Island, pre-merger nerves are also in evidence. Last night, I think all of us found it very difficult to sleep. I kept waking up about every 10, 15 minutes. I suppose I just had today in the back of my mind the whole time. Um, and I think not knowing is the worst thing. When, don't really have any information whatsoever about what's going to happen today. Even a prisoner who leaves his cell pines for his, uh, the environment that he, he feels safe in. So, yeah, it'll be difficult to have to start afresh, build a new shelter and stuff. I think that's the thing I'll find, the practicalities of it. I just hope there's nobody bossy. I hate bossy people and miserable people. And I've got a funny feeling there might be one and the other over there. <laughs> One miserable and one bossy. At eight in the morning, the tribes leave the islands that have been their homes for the past 15 days. This is Ila Popa, where the newly merged tribe of eight survivors will live for the remainder of their stay in Panama. Arriving at different points, each tribe follows a trail deep into the jungle, taking them on a demanding two-hour trek in quite appalling conditions. their final moments as members of separate tribes. Whilst old rivalries and loyalties may continue to influence their thinking and behaviour, from now on, in order to survive, they must exist as one. Most have waited patiently for this day. This is the day of tribal merger. And from tribal merger, will come one survivor, the winner of a million pounds.
North Island, welcome South Island. What I need you to do is to remove all your tribal markings, that is, your T-shirts and bandanas. Please land on the ground before you. You now cease to exist as the tribes of North and South Island. You will never again wear those colours. And on this flag, and on the flag behind me, you will find your new emblem. Dave, it's for you. From now on, it's important that you think of yourselves as separate individuals, albeit within a single tribe. When you compete in challenges for rewards or for immunity, it will no longer be tribe against tribe. Instead, just one of you can win the reward or attend tribal council safe in the knowledge that you're immune from being voted off. You might also be pleased to hear that in your new camp, you'll find another canoe to replace those you used previously. Two other things. When you arrive, you will receive an island warming or a camp warming gift or two. And they'll make tonight really good, I assure you. Lastly, though there's an emblem on that flag, you have no name. The name is your choice. Decide tonight and bring the name with you tomorrow to the reward challenge. It's been a tough day. Good luck, grab your things, I'll see you tomorrow. Two hours later, the merged tribe sees its new camp for the first time. As promised, there are some welcoming gifts for them. Two hens and a cock. Three dead chickens. Dead man walking. Eggs. Oh, eggs, yeah. Eggs. Three oh, burgers God. and bats. Oh, my God. And red wine. All and the way along. Yeah. Chickens. Two things. Chickens. How many bottles of red wine? Chickens. chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Home sweet home. Me and the chicken. Yeah. Well, who wants to do who wants to do the crackers? While the girls cook, the boys start to work on a new shelter. And letting boys do boys things. I'll stay out of this one. <laughs> That'll come down easy. Alistair is trying to be alpha male because he's been alpha male in his own tribe. But it, it's not going to really wash with us. I think Bridget is very different from me. And she's got a very, very different background. She's worked in a farm uh, all her life. And a, a wee sense is she treats me uh, like a, a, a little boy sometimes. It holds it a wee bit better. Oh Jesus. Is it in there? It's gone rock solid. What's it down? It's just uh, a thorn in or something. In there, is it? So it has. Oh, it's, it's, in. it's in there. It's broken off. It's in there, you can feel it. It's going see. Uh, it's going. You can see something there. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, you, can it, feel, yeah. you can feel it. You can feel it. Can feel it. Ah, you have to get that cut out. Where's the axe? <laughs> John, do you not trust me? <laughs> um, my first impression of this island is it's wet extremely wet and there's loads of chiefs and not that many Indians. I am not particularly convinced by their leadership. You know there's another way of cooking them? Yeah. Put them in the um Yeah in the water. Yeah we're yeah. gonna but put it within There are two girls. I would actually like to see them doing a little bit more physical work as they're an awful lot younger than me. Thank you. The tribe must eat their burgers quickly, 
as they've only got a couple of hours of daylight in which to finish their shelter. But the chosen site is far from ideal. Yeah, bugger! Oh, don't you start as well. Fuck, what was that? I think it was the ants. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that was a, that was a big oh. sting. It was just the ants. And we saw the boggy, large ant infested part we're supposed to camp in. As soon as I saw it, I thought, no, that's, <laughs> that's just not going to do, not for three weeks. As well as ants, there are poisonous frogs and snakes. Therefore, Alistair and John have a look around and find another location for their shelter. We've got a little hill, one beach down. Mm -hmm. It's quite a distance, it's going to be muddy, it's going to be hefty work to get everything over there. Mm -hmm. It's quite exposed, but it's dry and you can walk about in your bare feet. And it's nice to walk in. Not There's like no this. animals, no, but if it gets really rainy, we're going to be more exposed. If it gets really windy, we're going to be more exposed. So it's balancing up the lesser of two evils. What would you rather have here or across there? If we all work at it, I think yes. that sounds, I haven't seen it, but it sounds Why don't we take one me. piece of wood up each and then if we don't, if you don't like it, if the majority of you is no, we can oh, just no, take it back. No, anything's going to be better than this. The tribe do decide to move then and start from scratch. Nearly everyone is happy. I'd have stayed here. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. But I'm in a minority because I'm the only one. All the materials must now be dragged a quarter of a mile down one muddy hill and up another. John, axe. Here's Charlie. For the boys, the move <laughs> is a bonding experience. Alistair's just a big, beefy sort of hero. I already love him. <laughs> I want to elope on the boat with him tonight. Now I'm quite happy for him to take charge because he's, you know, he's a big sort of leader type, and I'd probably follow him to the ends of the earth because he's that kind of personality. Dave's a Bonnie Geordie fella as well, he's, he's nice, so I mean my preconceptions of them have been justified really. We had uh, Susanna over and... Uh -huh. Hi Susanna, as well. She's lovely. Oh, she's so but the girls, both the girls are going, oh, and me and Dave went, well, she's lovely. Yeah. She's great, what's wrong? And the girls are going, oh, we don't know, we don't know. I think the uh, girls definitely are more perceptive. And Bridget doesn't hold back in her opinion of Drew and Helen. Those fucking girls, that's all I've heard. My feet hurt. <laughs> All our fucking feet hurt. Christ. <laughs> Get on with it. By sunset, the shelter is complete and the tribe celebrates over a bottle of wine or six. Do you know, I think I've missed alcohol more than food. Isn't that really, really sad? It's gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> it's a nice bottle of 12.5%. Uh, this is not hydrogen. There's two oranges there. Well, half eaten. No, half eaten. Get the bloody orange down your ruddy neck, for God's sake. Because you you're good at Yes, dear. You're all good at opening oranges. <laughs> what um, did he do it himself? No, but I she's good really at it. I'm really, really interested in you two. <laughs> no, I have a bottle seriously. of wine to myself. Shut up, put cameras on it. Every, every time, every time. Oh, yeah. How much more wine have we got? Yeah. No, oh. the same thing. Oh, bloody rain. I'll take the wine in. We're going to lie each to the poor frost chasing the bar. Come on, Johnny. Feathers are feathers. Oh, boy, that's my favourite. Tooth is ferret. You lost it. Tooth is ferret, John. This guy goes into the pub again, pissed. And there's this boy sitting on the bar with this paper bag rustling. So what's your paper bag? He said, that, my friend, is a tooth is ferret. A tooth is ferret? What do you do with that? He said, that, my friend, will give you the best blow job you've ever had in your life. Like, fuck off, I've heard that. He said, no, give me ten quid. And then the tooth is ferret away to the toilet. Boy, he's tooth is ferret away. Twenty minutes later, comes back. Twenty quid. There you go, mate. Please be back here tomorrow, same night. Same time. So, fall on night, the boy's back there again. There's tooth is ferret. Guy has a briefcase, opens up for 20 grand, I'll buy that toothless ferret off you. Takes a toothless ferret home, and his wife pops in. Ah, what's that? That, my dear, is a toothless ferret. <laughs> what do you expect to do with that? Teach it to cook then. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> A man goes into library and he, he goes up to the librarian, you might have heard of it, he goes up to the librarian and says, um, can I have a uh, pint of lager and a pack of crisps, please? And the librarian says to him, I'm sorry sir, this is the library. He said, oh God, God, sorry, sorry, can I have a pint of lager and a pack of crisps? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call the place between a woman's breasts and a woman's oh, groin God. area the waist? No, no. Because it is a waste. You put another pair of breasts in there. <laughs> <laughs> Our tribe 
across the sweating barrier as soon oh, the as we're first hour? As soon as we're introduced to, to Helen. Helen, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here, <laughs> yeah, like? Oh. No, we, no, we broke it when you were sinking. Is a we're fucking, fucking sinking. <laughs> this fucking row. Are you going to get the bed? Oh, no. I cannot believe that we've exhausted all our booze. But it was really oh, funny. Was so, six yeah. bottles, 45 minutes. Right, Eki's out. <laughs> Eki's speed coat. Come on then. <laughs> <laughs> Says the copper. Johnny's <laughs> 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 no, 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 farts. Is it a fort machine? <laughs> I'm sorry. It was unbelievable. Coming up, the new tribe's first reward challenge. And conditions worsen in the camp. I think people won't have to be uh, voted off, they'll just actually leave. Overnight, the new island has been hit by the worst weather to date. Everyone's just really pissed off with the conditions, obviously. I can't see it getting any better because it's just constantly raining. Oh, oh. Yeah, all right, yeah. One way of getting down, innit? One way of getting down. It's immeasurably worse than, than the first island we run. There's, there's less wood, there's less uh, natural food sources as well. We had runner beans and limes and coconuts where there's, there's nothing at all here. I know. Drew didn't sleep at all last night, she just stood up all night because it was so cold and wet. So I don't know, I think people won't have to be uh, voted off, they'll just actually leave. Oh yeah, bugger. <laughs> it's a little damp underfoot. As you can see, it's quite muddy in fact. Um, I'm just getting on and doing my usual job of fire building. The girls are just trying to get the camp sort of tied it up. See so all our cuts get infected yeah. in this environment. The whole body's going to get infected. Yeah. I'm expecting to lose a limb a day at this rate. <laughs> that one, yeah. The doctor has already visited as it is to sort out John's foot. Stood on um, one of these that had fallen off and you can see the spikes and my foot's gone a bit black so um, yeah, I'm a bit worried. There's, there's green frogs as well, which apparently are poisonous. And apparently there's nine types of poisonous snake as well. To add to their woes, the tribe are even finding it difficult to reach coconuts. I think I feel quite similar to everyone else. Everyone's just fed up. And it just feels like we're just in a cesspit. I think it's a bit sickening as well, because we can see both as islands from where we are. I'd rather be back on North Island than be in this. This is ridiculous. There's nothing dry. I've got absolutely no dry clothes up that I'm wearing. Yeah. And that is it. Yeah. And these are my bed yeah. clothes. All the rest are soaked. Yeah. But you've got to, you've got to accept it, really. You can't help that, you know, but it's just a matter of keeping all the mud out. Mm. In their rush to complete the shelter and open the wine last night, the chickens were forgotten. Unfortunately, the rain has made it very difficult to carry their box up the hill to the new camp. In case you carry that, yeah. yeah. Are you right? Do you want to carry that as well? Yeah, fine. Okay. Right? Yeah, got it. Can we get one of the boys? Yeah, that would be great. Go <laughs> then. Alistair, could you give Susanna a hand with the box? <laughs> you can see why we decided to do it this way, right. Bridget and I are trying to drag three chickens up. If you, if you, that's all. Just, just take it, we'll just, just take you know, it. do get one step at a time. Sure. Right. Just, if you just keep the hold. Settle yourself. I think they've got a sixth sense. Oh. 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 New surroundings. We don't need the cockerel. So you don't need him for laying eggs. He'll, he will get eaten. I just hope I'm strong enough to wring his neck. I mean, I have no problems wringing chickens' necks at, at all. But he's a big bird and it's um, this pulling. 
so I shall have to see. Oh, does everyone want ketchup in? No, I don't. Oh, too late. So how did your tribe do it? Did you pass it around? Just sat, we all sat around it. But Ben managed to be four of us for a, for a while, like, so it was. The biggest eater amongst our tribe is Drew. Yeah. The weeest eater is Dave. Dave hardly eats it. Huh? Dave actually has a spoon. Yeah. Everyone had exactly the same amount. We've got one spoonful going round each yeah. time. Right. Spoon. Can I try some? No. Nope. <laughs> The thing is, it looks completely clear now, doesn't it? But within 30 seconds, it just, changes, it? just completely changes. Good afternoon, everybody. I left you yesterday battling the elements, but with the expectation of better things to come. Now, I know that that hasn't immediately materialized, but there were one or two housewarming presents for you to enjoy. And hopefully, over a glass of wine yesterday evening, you came up with a name for your new tribe. Yeah, we thought um, Columbus Tribe. Columbus Tribe, and why is that, John? Well, um, Columbus uh, discovered most of this archipelago, so we thought it would be uh, in keeping with that. Great. Now, today's challenge is very simple. You'll notice two flags behind me. Between those two flags, we've embedded a log about two feet above the seabed. You've got to go down, hang onto that piece of wood for as long as you can in two groups of four people. The two people out of the eight of you that stay down there the longest go through to the final. OK, we'll do it uh, alphabetically, which means um, Alistair, Bridget, uh, Dave and Drew, uh, who are going to go first. Are you ready? Go! Alistair and Drew set the targets to beat. Helen, John, Johnny, Susanna, are you ready? Go! Congratulations, Susanna. The table tells its own story. The girls are through, and it's Alistair who misses out on a place in the final. OK, Drew and Susanna are ready for action. There is a twist to the final. When you get down to the beam that's below the sea, you will also find a rope. At the end of that rope, about 50 feet away, sits a log. We want you to pull that rope as hard as you can, bring the log in. You bring the log in under the beam, and the first of you to emerge from the water holding the log aloft is the winner. All right then, are you ready? Go!
my goodness me. I've got to call that a tie. I can't think of anything else I can do. Fantastic effort, both of you. <laughs> Congratulations, Drew and Susanna. There really was nothing in it. There are plenty of goodies for you to enjoy here, though. And I think these are going to make you smile. There's a completely fresh set of clothes for both of you. That's one thing that's good, but wait for it. This here is going to act as your laundry bag. And later this afternoon, I'm going to come over to your island oh, and pick up everything you've got and take it away to be freshly cleaned for you. All right? So that's uh, the first two bits of good news. Do you remember before you left England to come to uh, Bocas del Toro, you chose a luxury item? Mm -hmm. OK. Here's a mixture of good news, and there's plenty of it. Drew, you chose that photograph. There's your luxury item. Thank you. And Susanna, you chose this book, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. So there's your luxury you. item. So it's all good news so far, and it gets better. Because if you come down here with me, you can choose one each between you now of any of your fellow survivors' luxury items to take with you. They're all standing behind. They have no influence in this decision at all. This is really hard. I'm thinking definitely hard. Really? Mm. It's awful. <laughs> right, well, you've chosen the hammock. Is that a definite decision? Uh, well, I think so. Yes? Yeah. Two nods. All right. So, the first thing that comes out is a hammock, which allows everybody asleep later in the day. I think you two deserve it first for winning the reward. It's got mm. the football. Do you think it has to be the football? Yeah. Because everybody can play everybody the football. Because only, yeah. so only four people can play in the ball. Exactly. So you're, everybody can play with you're, the ball. You're soon going to find out, because we'll hear whether or not there's a cheer from behind. You've chosen the football. Yeah! <laughs> you beauty! Back at the camp, Drew and Susanna are delighted with their new outfits. Shoes off. I was in two minds about whether I should go for it or not, because obviously if I start looking as if I'm strong in the reward challenges, I'm going to make myself even more of a target to be voted off early. But at the end of the day, I think the adrenaline kicks in and you realise, God, I can do this, um, and kind of the strategy goes out the window. Because of continued bad weather and the dreadful conditions underfoot leading to a growing risk of infection, the tribe receive a tarpaulin and a rope to secure it, which should keep the shelter dry and at least allow some sleep. There's the other winner. Susanna and Drew hand over their clothes for the laundry. Take care. Bye. It's going to be hot. It is. Okay. It is excellent. It's fabulous. Just like a t shirt. And just wear t shirts and shorts are necessary. Are we putting the mose in it up? Like, like curtains. Does it, yeah. Like a tent. Yeah, like, like a tent without a zip. You know, yeah. that's it. And then the rain sets in again. But for once, the tribe don't suffer. Next on Survivor, Susanna's mistake. I'm so sorry. If people are looking for excuses, um, then I've just given them one. <laughs> The laundry delivery for Susanna and Drew means a positive start to the day. Oh, you smell it, can you? Yeah. It smells nice. Yeah. is good today, I think, compared to the way it was yesterday. It couldn't get much worse. We had a really dry night, um, and although it was extremely cramped, it was dry, and that's the main priority, that our stuff we can keep in there, and it will keep dry. So it's better. The morning tree mail brings some surprising news. It's a good one. Go directly to, to Tribal Council. Do not pass go. Do not collect immunity. Leave at sunset. Well, it's just straight Tribal Council, isn't it? Yeah, straight Tribal Council. Actually, it was a shock because we, we didn't expect uh, Tribal Council tonight. We thought it would be an immunity challenge after the, the reward challenge yesterday. That's why I brought the clothes back down. Everyone's been quite friendly and things, but I think it's just all on the surface. We both know that South Tribe's going to vote against North Tribe and North Tribe's going to vote against South Tribe. We both know that. 
when we Alistair. first when we first arrived and the first day we arrived here Alistair came up to Johnny and I and said um, we're all going to vote as a tribe against Bridget and then afterwards people can do as that in where, as in as, as in North, 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 North Tribe yeah. Yeah. Bridget doesn't seem happy at all Bridget does not Bridget. seem happy she's not helping herself really I mean you can say that each time she said anything the other the remainder of Helen North Tribe just to look Helen at each other Helen and Drew really don't like her I think it's quite unfair to judge Bridget on her performance the past 48 hours. She doesn't handle change very well um, and she's been very introspective and a bit morose over the past couple of days and I think people have noticed that but she was like that when we first arrived at the uh, South Island and then came out of herself and then you know I, I really liked her by the end of it. Seems to me already that there's uh, a few dominant people and that probably didn't gel well with me, so I feel a bit a bit uncomfortable around some, some of the other people. Put it backwards. What the A loose chicken, perhaps I ought to watch. <laughs> I'll let the inexperienced try for a while. I'm so, so sorry. Susanna, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't know what's in there, Susanna. It may come back. Oh. Where, which way's it gone? Oh, it, it, was. Was. it went across the, the swampy it's, area it's, and then it's into the thick forest. High. It might come back. I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's me without chicken, honestly. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm, that's just such a stupid. Just Literally, just opened it like that. <laughs> oh, out. Oh, look, you opened it right up. I was leaning over it like this so that none of them could get out. What's the chances of it coming back? 50%. That's right. Um, might get frisky. Right, thank you. I'm kind of feeling my weakest that I have done on the island so far, I think. And the fact that it's tribal council, so I think makes everyone feel a little bit um, vulnerable. And particularly when you've done just something that I've done, it doesn't help things. If people are looking for excuses, um, then I've just given them one. It's just one of those days. It's one of those days and you're feeling physically horrible and then... Pretty shitty emotionally vulnerable and the, the two collide and there you go, bingo. Yeah, I'm telling Alistair this morning about my children, that didn't help. But I never thought I'd ever miss this much. Anyway, got to keep busy. <laughs> Thanks mum. <laughs> Both end up in tears. An hour later, the chicken returns. Chicken butt. Well done. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well it's done. Pirouettes in my ear. So I had its tail, and it was just doing spirals. It, I think the strongest person in the whole tribe at the moment is Drew. I think she's been a secret weapon. She could be close to being the opposition if I get to the final. As evening approaches, so does Columbus Tribe's first Tribal Council. I haven't really got any feelings about Tribal Council this evening. Um, I know who I'm going to vote for. I've known all along who I was going to vote for. Possibly if I've got voted off, then so be it. Welcome Columbus Tribe to your first Tribal Council together. Please put your torches in the stands and take your seats at Council.
Tonight's tribal council is different from any other because you're going to find out how Survivor is going to change and how that change may well affect the way you play the game as individuals. Firstly, from now on in, none of you will be leaving us. Clearly, two are going to remain at the end, head to head, for the ultimate prize. But the rest of you, when voted off, will come and sit here on the jury. And you'll watch. And you'll listen. And then, on the 37th day, the jury will vote about who will win the million pounds. That vote will be sealed. And none of us, and I really mean none of us, will have any idea about the way the vote has gone until we go to London for the live final show where that vote will be revealed. Now, there is going to be a seventh vote. And the seventh vote will come from the public, who by then may well know more about you and your lives here than perhaps even you know yourself. So, it is the viewers who have been watching us all who could hold sway in the decision about who wins a million pounds. At any time, should we come to Tribal Council and you vote, and the vote be even, the people who have tied will have to stand and make a case for their further inclusion in Columbus Tribe, then another vote will take place without the people who were tied. And there's one other thing. Tonight, there will not be a vote. You're back here in three days' time for the first tribal council, which you will say goodbye to someone of this new unit, and they will become part of the jury here. In the meantime, good night. You may take your torches and depart. Starting shortly on ITV2, more from Columbus Tribe's first days together in Survivor Raw. Next time on Survivor, they might seem to have bonded, but beneath the surface, cracks are appearing in Columbus Tribe. I have to say, the only person that doesn't seem to be doing their fair share would be Alistair. You see, it does seem to be taking it easy. For the cockerel, time's up. Lincoln. For the survivors, time will be the key in the longest challenge of all.